Time was come. Mm -hmm. God sent forth his son made of a woman. All right. Made under the law to redeem them that were under the law. That me right that we might receive the adoption of sons. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And because you are sons, God has set forth the spirit of his son right. into your hearts crying, Abba, Father. That's like Daddy. Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, an heir of God through Christ. Amen. That's good news, huh? Good news, somebody don't even know it's good news. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Don't even know it's good news, but let me tell you a little bit about it. I just want to preach today just for a little while from the topic switching families. Switching families. Pray with me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask right now that you continue to anoint and dwell in this place in the form of your precious Holy Spirit. Lord, would you move among this, your waiting people and have thine own way. 
Touch the hearts and minds of this waiting congregation that they might receive the words you have given unto your servant. Lord, I furthermore request that you would take me now and hide me behind the shadow of the cross, that they might not see me but Christ in me. Lord, bless somebody's soul. Cleanse and make them whole. In the master's name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen. 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 Switching families. As I said earlier, one of the core principles that I tried to instill in Mount Carmel Baptist Church when I first arrived here and even to this day was the concept that the church is a family. Amen. Amen. The church is a family. And when we think about family, many things go through our minds, I mean, because uh, we've got good family and we've got some, well, if you're honest, not so good family. Amen? Amen. you got some folks that do right and then you got some folks that nag, yes, as they used to say, do right. So how would you rate your family? On a scale of 1 to 10, let's make it simple. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. How would you rate your family? Is it everything that you would hope it to be? Uh, if given the opportunity today, mm -hmm. just for today, one time opportunity, would you switch family? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you know, when I was young, you know, you, when you're young, you have a tendency to look at, look at the folk across the street. And, 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 and every now and then for a fleeting moment, you might just think, man, I wish I was in that family. All right. uh, they always have nice shoes and they always got nice clothes when school starts and it seems like they always going on trips. Uh, I think it, it'd probably be nice if we could, if I could just switch. Uh -huh. Y'all act like y'all ain't never thought that before. I, I know I'm not the only one. Amen. Okay. Just switch, just for, just for a little while, just, just, just to be uh, uh, in somebody else's family, to be with a wealthy family instead of struggling all the time, to, to be with a, with a family that, that, that goes out to the, to the suburbs somewhere instead of. Uh, uh, gathering all together in the kitchen with the oven on because the oil had ran out. I, yeah. Sometimes when you're a little kid, you might just for a fleeting moment, I ain't talking about for a long time because you know you love your mama or you know you probably love your daddy and your sisters, but just for a fleeting moment, you might think for a minute, man, I wish I had another family. We have a tendency to, to rebel against our families when things don't go the way we want it to go. Amen. 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 Thinking in our mind, I hate her. Yeah. Amen. She always making me do these dishes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I can't stand him. Yeah. Amen. Well, let me hang out the way I want to hang out. Think, treat me like a little kid. I can't stand. Yeah. Right. I, I can't get an amen in here, y'all know y'all. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, but 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 in, in black families we don't say that kind of stuff out loud. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> Used to get shocked in the supermarket the first time I saw a little white boy tell his mom, I hate you. Because she wouldn't get him the cereal. She wanted him to Y'all hear what I'm talking about? Yep. Amen. Yep. Comedian once told a joke. He said a, a white boy in the supermarket screamed at his mama and told her, I hate you, and my mama slapped me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, don't you ever talk to me the way he talked to his mama. <laughs> she beat him for it. Amen. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. But when you think about switching families, you know, uh, um, um, well, let me go back. You know, I'll admit my family, everybody and everything in my family is not the way I would like it to be. My siblings, all of them are not the way I would 
like them to be. And maybe even your parents were not what you wanted them to be. Amen. But would you be willing to trade them for another? And when you complain about your families, you should consider the alternative, which is not to have a family at all. All right. All right. Somebody that somebody grew up not even knowing their brothers or their sisters mm -hmm. because they were separated mm -hmm. by family services when they were young. Mm -hmm. And they spend their whole life and a, a great deal of their resources just find, trying to find not all but just one brother. Mm -hmm. Just one other person that's really from their family. Amen? Amen. If you think about how uh, 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 deficient your mama was or how deficient your father was, mm -hmm. you got to think about the alternative, mm -hmm. which is not to have had a mother or father at all. all. Oh, right. People have gone through records and, and brought lawsuits mm -hmm. just to find out not the person, but just to find out their name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Somebody will spend thousands of dollars just to find out what their mother's name was. Y'all yes, yes, mm -hmm. don't hear what I'm talking right. about today. Mm -hmm. When you think about switching families, you've got to think about the alternative. Mm -hmm. Not having a family at all. Right. The family is changing. We all have seen it. We all know it. We all recognize it. I know you've seen it. Amen? Amen. And, and social factors that impact our families will just knock you back. Back in 1992, a man named Russell Chandler, he wrote a book called Racing Towards 2001. That was in 92. And this is some of the things that he said. He said, first he said, more than half of all families as we race towards 2001, I'm sorry, towards 2001, this was in 1992, children will spend, more than half of all children will spend part of their lives in single parent homes. Mm -hmm. that, was, that, that, that was unheard of back then, but now you see it now, it doesn't even bother you anymore no, sir. to see a, a young girl with children and no husband. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even cross your mind, these things were unheard of mm -hmm. at right. this time. He said over half of them will, will spend time in a single family home. He said by 2010, one and three married couples will have to have a stepchild or an adopted child. One and three. Amen? Amen. I don't know about you, but, but, but I had, when I was young, I had so many other children that for any period of time, whether it was months or a couple years, that lived with my mama. Mm. Amen? Amen. 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 Because their parents weren't around. Mm. Somebody had walked out on them. Mm. Wow. And then he said, see, for, for, thirdly, moral standards will begin to decline. Mm. And more children will be wards of the state after being abused, abandoned, or neglected by immature parents. That was prophetic back in 1992 he wrote this. And, and, and even more shocking than that are the realities that in our community, in the, in the black community, the extended family is disintegrating. Mm -hmm. The pool of, 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 of African American children up for adoption continue to grow astronomically. As, as our, our, our parents and, and young parents become addicted to drugs like heroin and, 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 and cocaine. Amen? Amen. African Americans, he said, is, are, are less than 20% of the American population, but they will comprise more than 60% of children looking for a home. Amen. And... And more children are outside of the family waiting to get in. The need for a higher consciousness among our people is important. 
Sometimes we don't even think about it. Things happening around us to our families. We watch the disintegration of our communities and, and we shut ourselves off and we don't think about it. We let our children out in the street without even thinking about where they're going. Not even educating ourselves on the culture of our young people. Do you have any idea why that boy always wears red? Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about today. An orphan boy, he ran away from the orphanage and he went to look for a home. and He dreamed about getting a perfect family. And uh, he came across this one home, and he was impressed with it. He looked inside in the, in the window, and the mother and the father were arguing and screaming at each other. And he knocked on the door, and he told them he needed a family. Well, they let him in, and they, they fed him like a stray cat. But he asked them, could he come to live with them? They thought he was cute, but he... They gave him a little sandwich and sent him on his way. He slipped away before the authorities came because they had called the authorities on him to tell him that there was a child that didn't have a home. Then he stumbled upon a little house on the other side of the tracks. It was not a beautiful house. It needed some work on it. The roof looked like it leaked and the screen door was hanging off. Mm -hmm. But when he looked in the window, there was a widow woman, and she had 12 children hanging around her, and they were all smiling and <clears throat> playing games and things. And she, he knocked on the door, and he asked her, could, she, could he come in? She invited him in, washed his face, and then she brought him down and sat him down at the table with the other 12 kids to get something to eat. And when he looked around, he immediately realized and recognized that a lot of the kids that were there were some of the same kids that were in the orphanage. Mm. Okay. He looked at the woman, he asked her, could, she, could he live with her? She said, sure, you can live with me if you're looking for a home. If you don't mind living with a widow woman that doesn't have much money, I don't mind sharing my house, but... Only the love of God can make this place a home for you. Amen. And with that, the little boy, he became the 13th child in that home. Mm. With a woman said, God, I'll keep this house and keep this children, these children as long as you make this place a home. Amen. And there are a lot of us today, we working and we hoping and we striving and we wishing that we could buy a house. Mm. A nice house. Amen? Amen. Amen. But you won't allow God to build a home for you free of charge. Mm. You still go through everything that you're going through in your life and in your family because you won't allow God to build a home for you and you don't even have to pay a mortgage on that. I, I don't know about you, but I, I, during this time when we have our church anniversary, I start to rejoice about God and the family of God that, that he's brought me. I mean, I thank God for all of you. I thank God for the ones that like me and the ones that don't like me. I thank God the one for the ones that treat me nice and the ones that don't treat me nice. I thank God for the ones that talk to me and the ones that's always talking about me. I thank God for my family. I thank God because there might have been no way that I would have met you. If it wasn't for the family of God. Amen. 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 I, I thank God for this church. Because I probably would have never met Paula if it wasn't for this church. Amen. I probably would have never hooked up with Jody if it wasn't for this church. Tiberius and us would never have shared our gifts if it wasn't for this church. Amen. I would have never had a friend like Leroy McMillan if it wasn't for this church. Y'all right. don't hear what I'm talking Amen. about today. Amen. I thank God for the family. Is it a perfect family? No. no. Oh boy, I could tell you some stories. <laughs> it's not a perfect family. But like I said, family is family. Amen. 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 And, 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 and when the family needs something, family jumps mm -hmm. to it. Amen. Yes. 
Or you might talk about me, but I'm still going to come see you when you go to the hospital. Amen. You might you might criticize me, but I'm going to still try to minister to you anyway. Amen. Uh, you might call me everything but a child of God, but I'm still going to sing the songs of Zion right in front of you. Amen. Amen. Because family is family. Amen. Now, the text here that, 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 that you chose for your church anniversary or the, the, the team that put it together chose for the church anniversary is Paul here trying to explain in this letter to the Galatians the relationship between every believer and God as adopted sons. Amen. And daughters too if you want to be, you know, politically correct. You know, you got to be politically correct today. Yes, sir. And Paul addressed this tendency of these Galatians and, and many of us as uh, new Christians and mature Christians to embrace Christianity by still, but still trying to embrace the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. I've talked to y'all about this before, you know. Folk will try to bring things into your family mm -hmm. that they had in some other family. Yes, sir. Amen? All right. And folk will come in and try to come into your family and say, yeah, you can accept Jesus Christ, but you also need to wear this thing on your head. Amen. Yeah, yeah you, you can accept Jesus Christ, but you need to, to let your hem down to your ankles in order to serve the Lord in this church. And the Galatians were going through the same thing. They were convinced that they could walk on both sides of the fence. They had to obey the laws of Moses, but they, they also could accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? So in the text, Paul says that Christ came in the fullness of time and died to save or redeem us from the necessity to align ourselves with the law. <coughs> I ain't trying to talk too high-minded or anything right. for you, but I, I need you to try to keep up with me for a minute. All right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there, there was no need for them to continue to try to uh, uphold all the tenets of this very strict law. And through him, that is Jesus Christ, anybody that believes can be adopted into the family of God and become full heirs. Yes. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. So all of the benefits without any allegiance to any rituals, without killing any bulls, without shedding blood and putting it on the altar and all those things that they believed they still had to do. He explained that the law was only designed to last for a certain time. Uh -huh. And he compared the Christian's relationship to this law of Moses, which they call the Mosaic law, to that of a child who is the heir to a kingdom. Amen? Amen. Now, now, this is how it works. Until you become of age, prescribed by the law or parents or whatever the case may be, your culture, Paul said the child in a family is little more than a slave or servant, subject to all of the instructions and the rules given by the tutors or instructors of parents in their family. Mm -hmm. Can anybody relate to that? Mm -hmm. that, that that's why you, you, you get to crying out, you know, when I get 18, I'm leaving here. <laughs> because, because until you grow up, you are basically a slave or a servant within the family. Right. Amen? Amen. Y'all don't y'all don't hear what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. When I was young and, and the news came on and it, the TV needed to be turned to channel six, my father would say, Boy, get up and turn that channel. Right. Mm. Turn that TV to channel six. I, yeah. I was the remote control. <laughs> uh -huh. I was the yeah. garbage man. Yeah. I was the dishwasher, yeah. the pot scrubber. Yeah. Amen. I was the bathroom cleaner. Yeah. I, I was the gardener. Amen. Right. Basically, until I reached a certain age, I was a slave or a servant. All right. Within my family, I had to do whatever. Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? Everything. That's how it is. Paul was explaining to these Galatians how it is with the children of God. Mm -hmm. I had to do whatever I was told. They had to do whatever they were told by their law. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm an heir. Even though I got my family's name. Mm -hmm. Even though once my daddy's gone, the house is going to be left to me. Right now, my time hasn't come. Mm -hmm. 
Get up, boy, and change that channel to channel six. Amen? And when the time comes, I, I'm not going to be under that authority any longer. My daddy can't tell me what to do no more. My mama can't tell me. Am I right about it? All right. All right. My mama can't tell, but she can, she can, but but you know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. You know what I mean. Amen. Yep. If I want to do it, I do it. I do it because I want to. I don't do it because I have to. Right, right. Amen. I don't, I don't do it by compulsion. Amen. Amen. Now, when Christ came to, to earth, he died on the cross and rose from the dead, right? Oh, yeah. We know that, right? Mm -hmm. And when he did that, he ushered in a new period where anybody who follows him is immediately adopted into the family of God, becoming right. heirs to the kingdom. Are y'all right. following me? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to teach you a little something about what you wrote on the bulletin. Amen? Y'all okay. wrote that on the, on the, who wrote that on the bulletin? Amen? Amen. So any person who accepts Christ as his Lord and Savior is instantly adopted into the family of God. Y'all got me? Amen. He or she instantly becomes a son or daughter of God. Now that was in 4 and verse 5, right? Of Galatians, right? And it said that God's Spirit enters each one of us and we become a child of the King. That was 4 and 6. It said God has sent his, forth his Spirit of his son into your hearts, right? Y'all remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, the same idea is emphasized in John 1 and 12. Mm -hmm. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. So as sons of God, each of us are full heirs and is thus freed from the need to observe all these rituals. Mm -hmm. All right. of the law mm -hmm. to gain access into the family of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm an heir. All right. You're an heir Amen. to the kingdom of God because you have been adopted into God's family. Amen. Now, 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 now that's, 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 that's a lesson from the word, but let's look at it in a spiritual context. Mm -hmm. there, there are generally two kinds of families, right? Yes, sir. There is your worldly family, mm -hmm. and then you got what? Your, your godly family or your spiritual family, right? Mm -hmm. Which is all of us together, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And by our very nature, we are born into a worldly family. Mm -hmm. Anybody that tells you that they were born holy is, is a liar. And I'm not calling them a liar, but the Bible says that you're a liar and the truth is not in you. Amen? That's what the, that's what the Bible says. By our nature, we're born into this worldly family. And, and and this worldly family is rooted in selfishness and, and greed and lust and a long list of, of descriptions that promote this sinful agenda in the name of our freedom. Right. <clears throat> That's what we want to get to when we leave our family, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. You know it. You know what I'm talking about. All right. You want to get away from your family so you can do whatever you want to do. Amen. 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 And most of it wasn't any good for you. <laughs> Amen. Right. But a lot of us are spiritual orphans. Mm -hmm. We have we've been abandoned by our worldly spiritual family. And we're reaching for a real home. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen? All right. A lot of us have become orphans from the world in a lot of ways. I mean, we used to be out there. We used to be right in the family. We used right. to be right on the scene. Anything our worldly family was doing, we wanted to be right there. Right. Yeah. Any cabaret, any party, any bar stool, we wanted to be right there with our worldly family. But somehow, we got abandoned by our worldly family somewhere down the road. How did we get abandoned? I'm going to preach for a little while. So Go ahead on, preach, man. Well, we got abandoned by neglect. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. And some of us, we found out after being away from mama's house for a while that the world has not provided us with the joys and excitement that we were originally promised. All right. Uh -huh. Uh, 
uh, somebody told you on a commercial somewhere that if you dress like this, that if you drank this kind of liquor, that if you, uh, y'all don't hear what I'm talking about, if you went to this kind of place, that you were going to be happy. That you were going to have joy in your life. And you went out there with reckless abandon. And you found yourself a club. And you found yourself a bar that you like. And you bust up in somebody's saloon or into somebody's juke joint. And on too many occasions you found out that something was missing. It might have took you a while. You might have had to, 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 to give out your number and consequently sleep with a few people that let you down a few times. But sooner or later, you found out that the joy yes, sir. wasn't there. All right. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. No matter how much you dance, mm -hmm. you still, after a while, it just stopped making you happy. The loud music started getting on your nerves. The smell of liquor and cigarettes started to... Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. It started to bother you and you just got, got neglected by the world. The joy that they said they were going to give you, they didn't give you. And no matter how many parties you went to, you never really found the joy that you see. A lot of times you found yourself in the middle of a crowd feeling alone. Yes, sir feeling neglected, abandoned by the world that made you all these promises. You were going to be this and you were going to be that. And then the world abandoned you through abuse. All right. Made you an orphan to the world through abuse. There's some of us in here, you don't want to talk about it, but you've been used and you've been abused. You've been used and abused. Alcohol and drugs have changed you at a time for a time to a destiny that left you poor. Not just in money, but in health and, and in hope. And you know, uh, 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 more and more young people and young adults now are falling victim to drug abuse. It seemed like they would have learned from past generations. Uh, you know, you got folk out here getting on heroin. Don't they remember? They Don't they look back at what happened with folks that got on heroin back in the 60s and the 70s? Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about today. Folk, somebody today is still sitting down taking their first hit off of a crack pipe. Don't they see what's going on? Don't they know? Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. And you know, drug abuse, it, 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 the name is kind of uh, it's kind of deceptive because it suggests that, 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 that you're inflicting injury on the drug and you're abusing the drug, drug abuse. I'm abusing that drug, amen. I'm beating it down when actuality the drug is abusing you. Come on, Carl. Come on, Carl. The drug is inflicting all kind of penalty upon you and upon your family. You crying, your mama crying, your daddy crying, your children crying, and the drug is abusing you. Amen. Then you know you got orphaned by the world through abandonment. There's some of us that the world just abandoned us, just left us. Amen? Amen. I mean, you gave the world your best effort, uh -huh. your best talent. You gave it your time. You gave it your resources only to find out that you've been abandoned. Mm -hmm. And you fell between the cracks of life. Mm -hmm. You worked on that job Monday through Sunday. You never had time for the Lord. Mm -hmm. The one day you did have... You took that and took care of yourself and mm -hmm. did whatever you wanted to do and went shopping and everything else. You gave everything you had to the world just like a, 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 a wife, a good wife gives to a no good husband. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Cook for him, take care of him, take care of the bill, do all those things and then she'll turn around and one day he'll abandon her. <coughs> Leave her alone. Broken hearted and confused. What just happened? Mm. I worked on that job for 20 years. That gave up all my Sundays and all my, my time off. And got all kind of vacation time stocked up. And then I'm the one that gets the pink slip. There you go. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's because we worked to survive. Mm. We did whatever it took. 
Some of us stole. We stole time. Stole time away from our kids. Yes, sir. Stole time away from our relationships. Stole time away from our church. We killed. Killed our dreams. Killed our ambitions. Put all of our stuff on the back burner trying to on, uh, uh, serve somebody that had promised us that they're going to take care of us. Yes, sir. And we acted in a way that that uh, 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 the social order said we ought to act. Mm -hmm. Amen. We talked like the world wanted us to talk. Walked like the world wanted us to walk. Mm -hmm. Did what the world wanted us to do. And then we turned around and the world abandoned us. Mm -hmm. Some of us got locked up. Mm -hmm. Some of us got locked out. Mm -hmm. Some of us ended up in... in in the psychiatric hospital on, because we couldn't come to terms with the fact that we had given up everything and the world just dropped us like a hot potato. Come on, talk, talk now. Talk. You know that? I realize that there's some folks sitting in here and they're saying amen. they smiling on the outside. But on the inside, they singing like that old Negro spiritual. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child, yeah. child. Yes, sir. a long, long way from home. Every now and then you feel like nobody loves you, yes, sir. Right. like nobody cares about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of us that feel the bad. Mm -hmm. But I got good news. All right. <laughs> if you feel abandoned and if you feel abused or you feel neglected by the world, I got good news. All right. The good news is that someone who is unhappy with his spiritual family, you can switch families. Yes. <laughs> you can accept Jesus Christ and can become adopted into the... That's good news. I might have been in the family of the drug addict, but I ain't got to stay with the drug. I can switch families. I might be in the family of the, of the alcoholics, but I ain't got to stay in that family. I can switch... Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about today. I got good news. You can switch families. Amen. And when a child is adopted into a family, all the ties that bind him to that old family, mm -hmm. they're all washed away and yes. he becomes a brand new, Hallelujah. he becomes a, the member of a brand new family. Hallelujah. His name changes and yes. it, 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 the, the clothes that he wears may change and the place that he stays may change. Yes. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, yes. that's what it meant when it said, therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Yes, sir. All right. I heard a songwriter say, I moved from my old house. I moved from my old friends. I moved from my old way of strife. I moved out to a brand. I wish y'all would help me preach this thing. Amen. There are many comparisons that can be made between adopting a child and the love of God. That's one of the favorite uh, uh, analogies that preachers use when it comes to talking about the gospel of Christ. But there's one comparison that you can't make. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A family that adopts a child looks at all of the children that are available and chooses one that touches their heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. They take one or two children home, right? Mm -hmm. And they leave the rest because one of them or two of them touched their heart. All right. Mm -hmm. That's what happened when Pharaoh's daughter saw Moses in the mm -hmm. in the river, uh -huh. in the yeah. basket, yeah, you know, in the Nile. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Yeah. There were thousands of children dying, but she was touched in her heart by Moses. Mm -hmm. That's what happened when Mordecai looked down at Esther and found her to be fair and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And she touched his heart and he took her as his own daughter. Mm -hmm. But that's not how it goes with God, brothers and sisters. When God looked out on creation, he saw a world that was filled with suffering souls mm -hmm. trying to find our way back home. Mm -hmm. And when God looked at the world, he didn't just pick one soul. The word of God told me that God so loved the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
that he gave his only begotten son. Yes, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, I heard a songwriter say I was sinking deep in sin. <laughs> Far from the peaceful shore. <laughs> very deeply stained within. <laughs> sinking to rise no more. <laughs> but the master of the sea <laughs> heard my despairing cry <laughs> and from the waters lifted me. <laughs> now safe am I. I'm so glad when the world walked out on me <laughs> that God gave me a brand new home. <laughs> I'm so glad that when the world gave me a burden <laughs> That Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. I'm so glad that when the world knocked me down, that Jesus picked me up. Every day I'm singing, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that in the fullness of time, Jesus came down to this old Earth. I'm so glad that he died on Calvary, who rose in three days. The reason I'm glad that I'm adopted is because when one get adopted, he becomes an heir to everything in his father's house. I've heard somewhere that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I've heard somewhere that in my father's house are many mansions. Come and go with me to my father's house. There's joy, joy, joy in my father's house. But you know what? As I close this thing, I want you to understand one thing. You can't make Jesus your substitute. All right. All right. I know it's preaching time right now, but I need to let you know this. You can't make Jesus your substitute. All right. See, brothers and sisters, the first thought that is projected here yes. is that there's no substitute for Jesus. You got to be reminded that you shouldn't also try to utilize Jesus and his church as a substitute. What are you talking about, Reverend Harris? Well, it's like when a man get put down by a woman. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. He immediately go back, slap his face with some cologne, uh -huh. put on his best suit, and go out and find, try to find a date with another woman and make what you call a rebound. Am I right about it? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And there's some of us that are looking to Jesus as a substitute mm -hmm. for what we left behind. Ah, I wish y'all would help me oh, in there. See, it's dangerous to come to Jesus on the rebound. Mm -hmm. I know that you were hooked up on drugs, but don't come looking for Jesus to be a substitute. You can get high on the Lord, but don't come looking for him to be a substitute for cocaine. <laughs> You can get drunk on the Holy Spirit, but don't come looking for him to be a substitute for Inver House. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about? Right. It's dangerous to come to Jesus on the rebound, expecting him to be a temporary substitute until the trouble pass you by. Yeah. I'm a servant till I feel better. I'm a servant till I get my healing. I'm a servant till I get my money right. And while this text is true, there is no substitute for Jesus. And you know the reverse is true. Jesus is not going to be no substitute. You know what? Jesus ain't going to play second fiddle to nobody. Jesus ain't going to play second fiddle to your old man. Jesus ain't going to play second fiddle to the one that you lost. He not going to be the second string quarterback in the game of life. He not going to be the understudy in your drama. He demands first place in your life and there's no substitute for Jesus. Now I'm not going to tell you 
<laughs> that you can't get no substitutes in life. But Jesus shouldn't be a substitute. You know what? Margarine is a substitute for butter. But there is no substitute for Jesus. You know what? Nylon is a substitute for silk. But there is no substitute for Jesus. Splendor is a substitute for sugar. But there is no substitute for Jesus. Mrs. Dash is a substitute for salt. But there is no substitute for my Jesus. Mackerel is a substitute for salmon. But there is no substitute for Jesus. Almond milk is a substitute for whole milk. But there is no substitute for Jesus. Every child of God, you need to know there is no substitute for a man named Jesus. Without God, I would be nothing. Without God, my life would fail. Without God, I'd be like a ship without a sail. I've got to have Jesus, the lily of the valley. I've got to serve Jesus, the bright and morning star. I've got to have Jesus, the healer for my body. I've got to have Jesus. I might not need you. I might not need you. And I might not need you. But I've got to have Jesus. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? The choir said silver and gold. Silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus. I'm a new creature. I done got my business fixed. That's all right today. I know they're probably still talking about me down at the bar when I got my business fixed. I know they probably still talking about what I used to do down on the corner, but I've got my business fixed. I got a new name over in Jordan, and it's mine, all mine. Hallelujah. And you're right. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Must Jesus continue to bear the cross alone? And the whole world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. And definitely a cross for me. Father, we come at the close of service, Father. We come this morning thanking you what you have already done. Father, you have made a way out of no way, Father. You have kept these families together on one accord, Father. That they put you first, Father. We come this morning just to say thank you, Father. We thank you for this church, Father. We thank you for the family members that we have here. We are a family, Father. You brought us together on one accord, Father. We are that family, Father. And Father, we strive to love one another as you have loved us. Father, we come now and ask that you bless the sick that is among us. Bless those that are bereaved this day, Father. Father, I ask that you touch the young people of this church, Father. Father, most of all, we ask that you bless our sister Wade, the brother, Father. Touch Sister Mike Bride. Touch all of those that have called by name. Father, I ask that you bless the young people. Father, as we go forward this day, Father, we ask that you give us a God in life that we may see at the end of the tunnel, Father. As we get ready to go out the door, Father, we ask that you bless each family member one by one. May the grace of God, the sweet and the Holy Spirit, the love of Jesus Christ, rest and find his form now and forevermore. And all of God's people say, Amen, Amen. Jesus.